Thank you very much. Thank you. This is that big crowd. A ah, nice crowd. Thank you very much, and a very, very special hello, Montana. I've been traveling all over the state. And I'll tell you, I know Montana better than you know Montana. I was all over your state today. Everything's two hours. When are we going to be there? Two hours, sir, two hours. I got to like Tim Sheehy a lot to be here. I have to tell you. He better win. He better win. No. This is some beautiful country, though. I did do a lot of driving. I'd go to one. We went to some friends, some, a really good friend's house with your governor. You have a great governor in this state. You know that, great. You have a great. But we went around the state, and uh, it was so beautiful. And I'd say, when will I be there? Approximately two and a half hours. So, oh, great. Thank you. It's a big state. It's a beautiful state, and we love it. And we've won it every time by a lot. So I'm thrilled to be back in this incredible place, this beautiful state with thousands of proud, hardworking American patriots, which is what you are. You built the country. Less than three months from now, we are going to defeat radical left Democrat John Tester. He's terrible. He is terrible. He is terrible. And send Tim Sheehy to the United States Senate. We're going to evict. We're going to evict crazy Kamala. Do you know, ever hear of Kamala? Radical left. Radical left. Well, she has a couple of things that a lot of people from Montana would like, like she wants to take away your guns. You like that, right? All right, how about this? She wants to defund the police. Are you okay with that? She wants to allow millions of people to pour into our border through an invasion using using an invasion process i don't think so i don't think that's for you it's not for me either it's not for most people in this country we're going to evict crazy kamala and we're going to we're going to get joe biden out of the white house what's he doing now greg what's he doing You know, he wanted to debate. If we didn't have a debate, he'd still be there. Can you imagine if we didn't have a debate? Why the hell did I debate him? How did he do? Do you think he's happy with it? I don't think so. He's not too happy. You know, they took it away from him. They really did. They took it away. The guy had 14 million votes. She had none. But I'd rather run against her. I think she's easier to beat. I really do. I believe it. And we are going to make America great again. We're going to make it so great. This election is about saving our economy, ending inflation, securing our borders, restoring respect for our nation. We're no longer respected. Preventing World War III, especially for all these young people, these young, beautiful people. We don't want to get them into World War III and stopping a 1929-style depression, because that's what's going to happen. You saw what happened last week. With your vote, we will reverse the Kamala crash, and we will end the Kamala chaos, and we will stop the Biden-Harris invasion of people that don't belong in our country. They're invading our country. <laughs> Kamala Harris, you know, it's interesting. Nobody really knows their last name, if you ask people. Do you know what her last name is? Nobody has any idea what it is. Harris. It's like Harris. I don't know. How the hell did this happen? <laughs> you know, they said, uh, so we had the debate. He didn't exactly do well. And they actually, CNN was very nice. They said, that was one of the greatest debate performances I've ever seen, said by a very important person at CNN. Then what happens? Two days later, they said he was lousy. They don't talk about me anymore. They just said he was lousy. And he was pretty bad, you have to admit. But, but we're going to turn it around. We're going to turn this country around. We're going to turn it around very fast. We're turn it around very fast. Yeah. 
And Kamala is not up to the job. He's not up to it. Neither is Tester up to it. You know, Tester, everyone thinks like he's my best friend. He's never voted for me once, and yet his commercials is, I like Donald Trump very much. I love his pride. I love his border stance. He votes against the border. He voted against funding of the border. He said, I love his stance on energy. He voted against our energy programs. He votes against us 100%. He's voted in favor of crooked Joe Biden 100% of the time. He did it last time with the election. We had the same problem. Do you remember? He comes out, everyone's saying, he really likes your policy a lot. He does it like, he's a radical left lunatic, just like Kamala, and we got to elect him. We got to get him in. <laughs> got to get him in. Since becoming a presidential candidate, she has refused to do a single interview. You know why? Because she's dumb. Um, or hold a single press conference. She won't hold a press conference. She won't do it. She won't do it. She doesn't want it. And they're easy questions, you know, because the press, look at them back there. Look at all of them. A lot of press. They're rigged. They're rigged. They're fake news. You know, uh, I looked and uh, I get these tough questions from the press all the time, and I look at the questions that Joe got, right? Uh, where do you think you're having dinner tonight? What will you eat? Will you have ice cream for dessert? No, I don't know. It's unfair, the questions are so hard, he says. No, the way they treated him and with me. Well, I won't use the questions because I don't want to give many ideas. They give me the worst questions. They are so nasty. They are the nastiest people, I think, on Earth. And Kamala, Kamala gives the exact same speech over and over again, over and over, the same exact words. One of the people put it up, like they put six of them up, and every it was like, Every single word is the same. I don't do that. I got to give you a little bit of variety, right? I change all these damn speeches. Where are my speechwriters? I'm going to do that. Just have one speech and just for the next 90 days go out and just read that thing. But we don't like to read teleprompters, right? It's not as much fun. It's not as exciting. And somehow it's never as good, is it, huh? No, I think we're going to write up one standard speech. You read it from beginning to end. You know what would happen? You'd start walking out. They'd say, oh, look, Trump's not holding. How about yesterday? They said, oh, she had a big crowd. Oh, the crowd. The press is talking about the crowd. In New Jersey, I had 107,000 people. The press never even talked about it. In, they don't talk about it. Right? They don't talk about it. Because they're fake. In, I went to South Carolina. We had 82,000 people. He know, oh, front row Joe, look. We have many front row Joes. We have Mr. Wall over here, look. I love that suit. Do you think he's in favor of building a wall? I think so, yes. I think so. He's great. How many of you come to? Oh, over 200, right? And you know, he's a great guy. He's like, makes a lot of money. You've got to make a lot of money. He travels all over the country. But the front row Joes are great. We have so many people. They've been to so many of the rallies. The rallies are great. We had a tough one four weeks ago. A very tough one, right? We had a very tough one. Lost a great person, Corey. Great firefighter, great person. Really amazing man. Corey. We had a tough one. Huh? And two gentlemen, real Trumpers, real Trump people. The people, uh, they love our country. What's a Trumper? They love our country, too. Really, really badly hurt. They didn't think they were going to make it, and they did make it, and they're going to be as good as ever, and they're great. The doctors, the doctors in that whole Butler area did a phenomenal job, I will tell you. They thought these two would not make it. And they not only made it, they're going to be, uh, they'll be as good as new, but it, it'll take a little work, but they got hit hard. All Kamala does is read that teleprompter while pretending she had nothing to do with any of the disasters that they, you know, she's totally given up 
of all of the things she said, I want this, I want that, I want that. Now she doesn't want any of it. And then they accused me of being horrible when I questioned her. She wanted to be non-energy independent. She wants win windmills all over the place, windmills. Put a windmill on top of the building. Put a win we have so much oil under our feet. We have more liquid gold under our feet than any country in the world, including Saudi Arabia and Russia. And we don't use it. Four weeks ago, think of it. Four weeks ago, the media said she was grossly incompetent. And I said, oh, this is going to be an easy race. She didn't have a chance of beating me. She couldn't do anything. They wanted to get her out. They thought she should resign with Crooked Joe Biden. What do you like better? It doesn't matter anymore, but what do you like better? Crooked Joe or Sleepy Joe? Sleepy Joe, Crooked Joe. Okay, ready? They're both correct. I think Crooked Joe is more correct than Sleepy Joe. You're like, all right, ready? Crooked first, right? What do you like better? Crooked Joe? Or Sleepy Joe? Not bad. Crooked seems to always win. I mean, he's a crooked guy. All he had to do is think of it. If he didn't do the debate, he'd still be running. They'd be saying how great he is. He's a brilliant man, a wonderful guy, really at the top of his game. He wasn't at the top of his game 25 years ago, I'll tell you right now. And she's worse than he is. She's worse. He's smarter than she is. But the Democrats didn't have the courage to force her off. They didn't have it. They didn't want to do it. It was politically incorrect. And now the media is saying that she's wonderful. She's wonderful. The same people back there, four of them I recognize so perfectly. If you can't do a press conference, you cannot be president, okay? That's it. She doesn't do any. Remember when I used to always walk up to the press under the helicopter or under the wing of the plane and I'd talk to them? Talk I loved it because if I didn't like their question, I could say, I can't hear you, the helicopter. <laughs> But they do many versions of it. Nobody ever did that before, you know. That was a, and they copy, everybody copies me. So now she walks up, she'll take like a half a question, and she'll leave. Joe is bad. Joe couldn't hear, he couldn't, he couldn't do anything. It was an embarrassment to that art form. That was an art form. It was an embarrassment. Kamala, sometimes referred to as Kamala. You know, she got about nine different ways of pronouncing the name. And because the press is so dishonest, no matter how you say it, they'll say you were wrong. You were wrong. I don't care if I get it right. Actually, I couldn't care less. Couldn't care. I actually haven't been accused that I know of, of calling it wrong. But if I did, they'd say that he did it on purpose. And you could do that. I've done a lot of bad name calling where you call somebody that you know how to say the name perfectly and you call it on purpose. They say, sir, you made a mistake. I said, no, I didn't. <laughs> Kamala will not answer for her record of failure and weakness. A doctor, please. Doctor in the house, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Take your time. Take your time, doc. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. We love these people. They wait for two days sometimes, and then uh, it's, a, it's tough. It's not easy. Are they okay? Thank you very much. And doctor, take your time. Good. Thank you, darling. Thank you. Thank you. Take your time, doctor, please. We got a lot of time, right? Yes. Nice Friday evening. Friday evening in Montana. I think my next drive is going to be about three, four hours from here. <laughs> I wish it was a little closer. <laughs> that's the one thing. But that's OK.
That's all right. Our governor says we have all the time we want. Greg says we have all. You got one of the best governors. I don't know if you know. Do they appreciate it or not? I don't know. And the governor's wife. I don't know. He's a great one. He's a great guy. We better. We better get four more years. Or we're not going to have a country left if we don't get four more years. We got, we're going to not have a country left. That's why so many people, they come and they waited for days. They wait for days, and it's, uh, it's tough. It's tough. Thank you, darling. Thank you. Yay! Wow. Thank you, honey. That's great. That's really good. Incredible people. So when you're Commander-in-Chief, you don't go to the run and hide away from the press. You know, they go and run, and they want to go on a record that's a fake record. They have a fake record, both of them. How about the new guy? How do you like him? And anytime you tell a story about anybody, by the way, Steve Daines, how good is he? True. One of the, he's one of the finest. He's one of the finest people you'll ever meet. I really mean that, too. And uh, it's an honor to be with you. And you want to do this so badly because you want to save the country. We need the Senate. We need the Senate. So thank you, Steve, for being here. Thank you. And with a beautiful family. But you don't get to flee from tough questions, and you don't get to read a teleprompter, or, like, for short periods of time where you make a speech that's, like, two minutes and everything is right off the teleprompter. What a lot of work to do for that. And you don't sit across the table from Vladimir Putin and President Xi of China. They're lovely individuals. If you can't handle our press, because they're not as tough as you think, I've been handling them for four years, and then another four years. They don't stop. They keep coming at you. They're the worst. But we're going to do something. We're going to have the biggest victory. They're going to celebrate, because I think silently they do celebrate. I think silently they do. I think silently they're for us. They're afraid to say it, right? They're afraid to say it. But I think silently, a lot of those people back there in the press, and that's a lot of people, but I think they're for us. For nearly four years, Joe Biden's mental incompetence has given Harris a free reign to impose her ultra-liberal agenda on America and others with her and destroy our country. You're destroying our country. Joe Biden was exposed during the debate. Likewise, Kamala will be exposed during the debate. She will be, she will be exposed during the debate or debates. But so far, she's refusing to debate. We want to have a debate. Think of it. So she wants to have no debates, but one may be at the most. And she wants it to be an ABC, because ABC, ABC with George Stapadopoulos. Have you ever heard of it? It's the nastiest of all. Who would think it, right? You think of NBC is terrible, and they are. MSNBC is disgusting. But the worst might be ABC. And that's the only one she'll do. And you know, when Biden came out with a brilliant idea to have a debate, how did that work out for him? Not so good. But he came out, they handed me Jake Tapper, sometimes referred to as fake Tapper, but I have to tell you, he was totally fair, and Dana Bash, and they were totally fair. They really were CNN. So they said, we want a debate. They gave me one option, because they weren't going to debate. He didn't want to debate. They gave me one option. CNN, Dana Bash, and Jake Tapper. There will be no audience. There will be turning off your mics as soon as you finish speaking. And if you go over one second, they turn off, and they make you look very bad. The good part is he didn't use much of his. You know, they give you two minutes. 
and they'd say, right, you have 92 seconds left. And I kept saying, I'll take it. Can I have it? I want it. I want the 92 seconds at this. And then I'd do another one. You have 37 seconds left. That's a lot, you know, when you're up there, 37 seconds. And that's the last thing he wanted to hear because he didn't want to talk anymore. You have 77 seconds left. He goes, oh, show. what am I going to do? This is who our president was. And now we have somebody that's worse, in my opinion, worse. Uh, you have to remember, they said that he couldn't beat me now. I mean, he, after the debate, he was down, way down in the polls. They didn't even want to show the polls. They said he's not going to win. So they said, we're going to take him out and we're going to put somebody new in. This never happened to anybody before. You spend, we spent $100 million fighting crooked Joe Biden. And then all of a sudden, they decide to take him out and put somebody else in. She never got one vote. She was the first loser in the primaries. You know, she ran against Joe Biden and everybody else. I think they had like 16 people running. She never made Iowa the first state. I love Iowa. You know why I love it? Because I win it every single time with the farmers. We win it. But she never made Iowa. She was the first one to quit. And now, and, and stupid, honestly, she was the nastiest to him, too. And then he picked her. I couldn't believe it. And she was part of the cabal that got him out. You know, they got him out. They said, we'll do it the nice way, or we'll do it the hard way, Joe. We'll use the 25th Amendment, and we'll call you mentally incompetent, and everybody will believe us. And you know, what they did is a terrible thing, actually. They forced him out. It was a coup. We had a coup. That was the first coup in the history of our country. And it was very successful. He said, okay, I'll leave. If that's what you want, I'll leave. And now he's seeing what the competition is. I hear he's going to make a comeback at the Democrat convention. He's going to walk into the room and he's going to say, I want my presidency back. I want another chance to debate Trump. I want another chance. But I handed Kamala and Crooked Joe a surging economy with no inflation. We had no inflation. We had nothing. We would we had the greatest economy in the history of the world. True. Their radical socialist lunacy turned it into a failing economy with the worst inflation in probably 70 years. You know, they say 47. I don't believe 47. I think it's much more. I handed her the strongest border in U.S. history. She turned it into the worst border invasion in the history of the world. By the way, the chart, the border chart, I love that chart. I love that chart. I'm here because of that chart. I go, let me see that chart. If I don't turn, I won't be with you tonight. I won't be with you. I love that chart. You know the amazing thing? I'm going to sleep with that chart tonight. <laughs> no, you know, the amazing thing is that that chart, I use it probably 20% of the time, not that much. It's always on my left, not on my right. I mean, pretty much always. There are no people. We had a tremendous crowd, but all of the people, as far as the eye could see, they were here and some in the back. And how great were the people in the back? But all the people were the same. Nobody fled. You know, when a crowd hears a bullet, they always run. They heard lots of bullets, because there were lots of bullets going off. And the Our Secret Service shooter, our Secret Service sniper, whatever you want to call him, water shot, he used one bullet from much further away, because the sniper was there, and he was way over here. And he wasn't warned that this could happen. I mean, that was the breakdown they had. They weren't warned. But uh, he heard bullets. He immediately looked over took aim and shot one bullet. Can you imagine that from probably, yeah, probably 400 yards, pretty far. But if it wasn't for that sign, in this case, it came down, down to the right. It's never on the right, never. And it's never at the beginning of the speech. And I, I do, you know, I don't use the teleprompter a lot because I think it gets bad, but I, I don't, I just said, you know, let's take a look at the immigration numbers that we had, because they're great numbers. They're the best numbers in the history of our country. We've, the Border Patrol did that chart. Thank you very much, Border Patrol. I appreciate it. But the Border Patrol did that chart. 
And you see the arrow on the bottom, the red arrow on the bottom. That's the lowest point. That was the week I left office. Look what happened after I left office. Look at that. And it's much worse now because that's a few months now. It's the numbers are much worse. They've let an invasion of our comp country happen. But I took a look. And because I took that look, I mean, what are the chances of that? So I just want to thank everybody because I'll tell you what. The level of love and compassion and, and all of the things that we all went through, that was a terrible thing. And we're going to be very careful. We have to be very careful. This is, by the way, being president is a dangerous profession. You know, this is a very dangerous, this is not, <laughs> this is not the safest profession out there. But uh, it was an amazing event. And for those of you that don't believe in God, I believe that there's only one reason that could have happened, because the chances were so, so small. Right? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. And we're going back to Butler. You know that, right? We're going back to Butler. We got to go back. We got to go back to Butler. They were great. And the hospital was incredible. The doctors were incredible that worked on our two friends that were so badly hurt. Uh, the doctors were everything about it. And uh, we're going to go back just before the election sometime in October. It's already being worked on. And uh, I'll probably start off by saying, as I was saying. So you stand up. As I was saying. I gave Kamala and Crooked Joe a world at peace, and their weakness and incompetence quickly brought us to the brink of a global war. America cannot survive for four more years of this bumbling communist lunatic. Hey, look, we cannot let her win this election. It's not a question of me. We can't let her win this election. If she wins this election, we're not going to have a country anymore. Starting on day one, we will bring competence and common sense back to the Oval Office. You know. We're really a party of common sense, if you think. We're conservative and all that, but we're really a party of common sense. And by the way, we have a great libertarian with us tonight. Where is our libertarian friend? And I think he's going to be with us. Where is he? What a nice guy. Sit. Wait, stand up, please. Stand up. What a nice guy. What a nice guy. A lot of us are libertarian. And uh, I think he's going to be giving you a very nice surprise very soon. But he's a great, wonderful person. And we just uh, met, and we knew each other a little bit from before. Thank you very much for being here. How do you like the audience? Not, not bad. Do you think the Libertarians get this kind of an audience? I don't think so. But thank you. Great honor to know you. Thank you very much. But we'll bring back safety, security, and the American dream bigger, better, and stronger than ever before. If you want a preview of what a catastrophe, another term, of Kamala will be. And she was there. She was there. She was working with them. She was the border czar. Now she doesn't say she's the border czar. She said, I was never the border czar. I mean, she, everything they did, she's taking away now. But she was the border czar. She was the worst border czar in the history of the world. There's never been a border like this that allows millions and millions of people in a month from mental institutions and prisons. Let them come into our country. Just look at who she chose for her vice president. She went with the hand-picked candidate of crazy Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders wanted him so badly, and the Democratic Socialists of America immediately gave him the endorsement. Forget him. That's her thinking. That's where she's going to go. You know, a politician, when they came out, if Steve Daines came out and said 20 years ago when he started, I wanted to fund the police. I don't think he's saying that. I wanted to fund the police, everybody. Then he said, well, I was only kidding. I don't. The truth is, when you come out with a statement like that, that's where you are. And she wants to fund the police. And she wants to do, she wants to have all of your guns taken away. She wants your guns taken away. You, you, can, you can count on it. A politician, their first statement, Steve, is always the statement. Now, Steve said, I'm going to protect your Second Amendment. That was a long time ago. He said, I'm going to take care of our police. Right, Steve? 
I just don't want to leave any question in their mind, Steve. He's so happy I did that little second part. He said, oh my God, they might think I want to defund. No, Steve is never, he's not a big defunder. He's an increaser for the police. We want to take care of our police. They're doing a great job, right? As Minnesota's Governor Tim Waltz let rioters and looters burn down Minneapolis. Remember CNN? They're right back there. Watch. Oh, there goes their light. Their light just went off. While the governor's wife opened the windows to the mansion to enjoy the smell of the fire. She said, the smell is so beautiful. I love it. I wonder where she's coming from. Wall said that socialism is just another word for neighborliness. She wants to be — he calls them neighbors, good neighbors. He signed a bill to give illegal aliens free health care. He abolished Columbus Day. He ordered tampons to be put into boys' bathrooms. Do we have any children here? Please close your ears. He ordered tampons in boys' bathrooms, okay? He signed a law letting the state kidnap children to change their gender so that they go home. And But I'm not talking about him. I'm talking about her. This is her ideology. That's why she picked him. And he signed a bill allowing pedophiles to claim human rights protections under the state law. And then he said, by the way, J.D. Vance is doing a phenomenal job. But, but then he said, well, think of that. Think of the things I just said. Then he said, you know, I think J.D. Vance is weird. You know, it's a word that they use. I think he calls me that, too. No, we're not. We're, we're very solid people. We want to have strong borders. We want to have good elections. We want to have low interest rates. We want to be able to buy a house. We want great education. We want strong borders. I think we're very — actually, I think we're the opposite of weird. They're weird. You know what they do? They give — they work with the press on coming up with a soundbite, just a soundbite. And every station that night, the, all the networks, CBS, and ABC, NBC, they all said, oh, they were called weird, weird. They, it's just — it's unbelievable. You know, it's not a word that's really used too much in politics, but it's a terrible thing that they can do this. It's just a soundbite. No, J.D. Vance is a great patriot, and he's a United States Marine, and he's a real Marine, and he's a brilliant guy. And he went to Ohio State. He graduated in two years at the top of his class, just about at the top of his class. And he then got into Yale, and he became a Marine. He got into Yale, and he did great at Yale, and he met his wife, who was actually, I think, the number one student at Yale. They have a smart family. And uh, we picked somebody that was very special, and uh, he's really — he's really stepped up. I said, you got your sea legs, you know, because the first day they were hitting him with a lot of nonsense. And uh, he's got his sea legs now. He's going to be great. I think we like — don't we like him? And he's for the working — he's for the working man and woman. Tim Waltz is the man who's uh, very freakish. He's very freakish. If Comrade Waltz and Comrade Harris win this November, the people cheering will be the pink-haired Marxists, the looters, the perverts, the flag burners, Hamas supporters, drug dealers, gun grabbers, and human traffickers. But with a Trump fans victory, the cheers will come from the police officers, the firefighters, the Border Patrol agents, the steel workers, small business owners, parents and hardworking citizens of every race, religion, color, and creed. And that's what we're doing. We're getting record numbers, record numbers in the Hispanic community, record numbers in so many different communities. Nobody's ever actually seen — you know, this is the greatest movement in the history of our country. You do know that. Remember they used to say, no, 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 MAGA's a good, solid 35 percent of the party. No, no, it's 95 percent of the party, not 35. They used to say that. You know, they're very cunning people. Like, MAGA is 35. And it was, it was uh, 35, really? No. It's 95 percent of the party, and I think it's probably 90 percent. I think the whole country. Who can want — think of it. Who wants open borders? Who wants men playing in women's sports? And I'd like to congratulate the young woman who transitioned 
uh, from a man into a boxer. You saw he won. She won the gold medal. How about the young Italian, beautiful Italian boxer? She got in there, and she didn't know what was going on. And she was a very good boxer, you know, against other women. She didn't count on this. And he's up here. Boom. One little jab. Whoa. She goes, nobody ever hit me that way. Then he goes, boom. And she said, OK, I had enough. It's crazy what they're doing. And this person won the gold medal. Did they win the gold medal today? What do you think of that, Tim? I don't think Tim, I don't think Tim likes it. Uh, Greg, no good, right? Now, how crazy is it? How crazy is it? For four more years, crazy, and she wants it. She wants men to play in women's sports. She wants to take away your guns. All of the stuff, and now she's going to deny it. Watch. She'll come out with a statement. She'll deny it. And remember one thing. I'm going to say it again later because it's so important. No tax on tips. Do we like that? And they're just the opposite. They're driving people crazy. And our seniors, our senior citizens, we're not going to have them pay tax any longer on Social Security. Okay? Those two things. Four more years of crazy Kamala Harris means 50, probably it means 50 million illegal aliens pouring into our country over another four years. 50 million. 50 million could be 50 million more. They're overrunning our country. They're destroying our country. They're ruining our country, and they're making our country very unsafe. These are very tough people. These are criminals coming out of jails. These are people that are tough. The only good thing about them is they make our criminals look like weak sisters. That's it. These are really tough, nasty people. And we can't have it. You know, we all have a heart, but we can't have it. It means Double-digit inflation decimating your savings, and, and your savings are being decimated. I know what you're going through. It means violent crime ripping through the suburbs. You know, they talk about women. I think suburban w women like me a lot. You know, it's fake stuff. Why wouldn't they? Why wouldn't they? You know, I put something in when I was president. There will be no low-income housing developments built in areas that are right next to your house. You have a house in the suburbs. You're so proud. And then they want to build a low-income job with a 30-story building next to your house. And your house is worthless. And I stopped it. And then they say, well, I don't think suburban women like them. I think they like me. I'm going to keep criminals out of your neighborhood. That's really all that matters. I think they like me anyway. You're not going to have migrant criminals preying on our women and our girls while guns are confiscated from the law-abiding citizens. They want to take away your guns, and then they want to have our country overrun with some of the worst criminals there are anywhere in the world. And they come from all over the, the world. They come from Africa. They come from Asia. They come from the Middle East. They come from all over. They came, a large boatload came recently from the Congo. Where do you come from? Where in the Congo? Prison. What did you do wrong? We do not want to say murder. It was murder. And they're dumping them into our country. You know the money they're saving, these other countries? They don't, their prison population is way down. The money they're saving is, they've never, they've never had it so good. And if I were running any of those countries, if I were running Colombia, if I were running Brazil, if I were, I'd be doing the same thing, but I'd be doing it faster than they're doing it. Why wouldn't you do it? It's common sense. Dump all of your criminals. You know, in Venezuela, crime is down 72 percent. You know why? Because he took all of the criminals out of Caracas and out of all the cities. He took all of them out and dumped them into the United States. He emptied his prisons into the United States of America. Why are we taking this? Why do we take this? Why? So don't take my word for it. Listen. Kamala Harris's agenda straight from her own mouth. Would anybody like to see her? Let's do it for a couple of seconds. Go ahead. Yeah, I am radical. We need to get radical about what we are doing and right. take it seriously. As President of the United States, I am prepared to get rid of the filibuster to pass a Green New Deal. There's no question I'm in favor of banning fracking. We have to have a buyback program, and I support a mandatory buyback program. I believe it will totally eliminate private insurance. Let's eliminate all of that. But would you support changing the dietary guidelines? The, the, yes. The, you know, the food pyramid. What people yes. Are yes. To reduce red meat specifically. Yes, I would. 
Raise your hand if, cover, if your government plan would provide coverage for undocumented immigrants. Where do you stand on defund the police? This whole movement is about rightly saying we need to take a look at these budgets. Harris asserted that ICE is perceived as the modern day Ku Klux Klan. Are you aware that there's a perception? I see no. Are you aware that there's a that perception? That puts ICE in the same category as the KKK. Is that what you're asking me? I see to no peril. I'm not finished. I see none. And yeah, I am radical. We need to get radical about what we are doing. And that's just a small part of it. That's just a small part. That's what we have, though. That's what. That's where they're going. We're going. Remember, I said we will not become a socialist country, and I meant it. Except, I was wrong. We didn't become a socialist. We're going beyond socialism. We're becoming, if they get in, a communist, full-blown communist country. This is America. We're not a communist country. We're not going to let that happen. And Kamala is not just, she's not just dangerously extreme, and she is extreme, much more so than Biden. Because Biden didn't know he was alive, let's face it, okay? Are you a socialist? What does that mean? What does it mean? Are you a communist, Joe? I don't know. So he was sort of dangerous because the people around the Resolute Desk ran the country. Don't forget, he went after me. He weaponized government to go after me. I don't believe it was him. I believe it was the people circle. I could name every one of them. They're bad people. And we won our big case in Florida. Great, brilliant judge that was so smart and strong. And she didn't listen to the nonsense. And, you know, they play the ref with judges. They uh, criticize them all the time, scream at them, treat them horribly. Justices, the justices of the Supreme Court, all judges. And they think they're playing the ref like the great Bobby Knight, right? Play the ref now. They're, they're not putting up with it anymore. They're, what they are doing is, in my opinion, totally illegal. Kamala is grossly incompetent and, in my opinion, has a very low IQ. But we'll find out about her IQ during the debate, okay? Let's find out about her IQ. So, you know, we have this great system. I want to show you just one other thing, please. Do you mind putting it up, please? Thank you. We've been to the border. You haven't been to the border. I, and I haven't been to Europe. And I, I mean, I don't, I don't understand the point that you're making. Talking about the significance of the passage of time, right? The significance of the passage of time. So when you think about it, there is great significance to the passage of time. Ukraine is a country in Europe. It exists next to another country called Russia. Russia is a bigger country. Russia is a powerful country. Russia decided to invade a smaller country called Ukraine. So basically, that's wrong. So you're now no longer are you necessarily keeping those private files in some file cabinet that's locked in the basement of the house. It's on your laptop, and it's then therefore up here in this cloud that exists above us. Right? The Caribbean nations, island nations, in the Western Hemisphere, that is where the Caribbean is. We are also in the Western Hemisphere. They are our neighbors. I am here, standing here on the northern flank, on the eastern flank, talking about what we have in terms of the eastern flank. I can imagine what can be and be unburdened by what has been, you know? Space is exciting. It is time for us to do what we have been doing, and that time is every day. Every day it is time for us to agree that there are things and tools that are available to us to slow this thing down. We will work together and continue to work together to address these issues, to tackle these challenges, and to work together as we continue to work. Do you ban plastic straws? I think we should. Yes. I mean, look, I'm going to be honest. It's really difficult to drink out of a paper straw when you had it. If you're just like, if you don't gulp it down immediately, it starts to bend. Yes. And, then, and then, you know, the little thing catches it. And then, you know, so we got to kind of perfect that one a little bit more. Do you know, okay, a bit of a history lesson. Do you know that women were not, the women's teams were not 
allowed to have brackets until 2022? So the United States shares a very important relationship, which is an alliance with the Republic of North Korea. AI is kind of a fancy thing. It's, first of all, it's two letters. It means artificial intelligence. As a woman, there is a balance to be struck between being tough and being a <laughs> So if you listen to Kamala's speeches, you'd never even know that she's been running the country. She's been running the country for four years and doing a horrible job. Look at what's happened to our country. We are a failing nation. I hate to say it. We are a failing nation. I wish I didn't have to do this. I wish I didn't have to go and do this. I wish they were great. I wish they'd make our country great, but they're going to destroy our country. You know it. They even know it. And probably they're doing it on purpose. It's hard to believe, but they're probably doing it on purpose. Kamala is working full-time to erase her record of open borders, transgender anything, high energy costs, taxes, interest rates, which are at sky levels, rising crime rates, and wars all over the world. We're at wars all over the world. You know, when I left, we had nothing. We had no wars. The world respected your country. We had no wars. Viktor Orban, who is the prime minister, the boss of Hungary and knows everything very well, they asked him, what's wrong? The world is breaking out in wars all over. He said, there's one thing wrong. The United States needs Donald Trump back as president. And if you have that, you know, which is true, you won't have any of these problems. You won't have any of these problems. Russia would have never, ever attacked Ukraine. Israel would never have been attacked on October 7th, and you wouldn't have inflation, and you wouldn't have had the horrible Afghanistan embarrassment, the most embarrassing day, I think, in the history of our country. On Election Day, we're going to tell this radical left country buster, she's a country buster, that we've had enough. We can't take it anymore. We're going to say, Kamala Harris, you're fired. You've done a horrible job. You're fired. Get out of here. Get out. Get the hell out of here, Kamala. All right? If Kamala wins, foreign leaders will treat America's president as a joke. They already do. Now we have two jokes. Think of it. Who, what's what's going to happen? Russia gets a little nasty. China, President Xi, I know him very well. Got along with him very well until COVID, in which case I said, that's the end of that. But President Xi, these are, these are fierce people. These are fierce people. They don't even know who the head of our country is. Who do we have? Are we dealing with Biden? Biden probably should get out, but she should get out also. I think they should both get out. I'll tell you what. Do we have a volunteer? Yes, I will volunteer, okay? We have to straighten out. We have to straighten out our country. They're not going to do it. They will rip us off more than ever before. These foreign countries are ripping us off at levels that you've never seen before. And they, we had them, we had them held back. Russia respected us. China respected us. I took in hundreds of billions of dollars from China. No other president took in not 10 cents. For years, they ripped us off. And our country will never be given a chance for a future. We're never going to have a future back. If we don't solve this problem now, we can't go like this any longer. We're not going to have a country any longer. When I win, we're going to win. When I win, America will be respected again because you will once again have a president who puts America first. And you have a president who will fight, fight, fight. Thank you. Thank you. 
For four incredible years under our administration, I stood up for America, and we achieved more than any administration in the history of our country. There's never been a period of time like we had for four years. There's never been. And then we had COVID, and we got rid of it. We never got — you know, I got great credit for the economy, great credit for the military. We defeated ISIS rapidly. I started no wars. First time in 78 years, I started no. We didn't have any wars, these endless wars. They keep going and going, people getting killed all over the place, spending billions and billions. We passed the largest tax cuts and regulation cuts in the history of our country. We achieved record low unemployment rates, record low poverty rates, and rising wages for everybody. Everybody in this room, your wages increased, your money increased, your businesses increased, whatever you do, everything was better for four years. We unlocked American energy independence and soon would have been energy dominant. We were going to be energy dominant. We took on the globalists and corrupt special interests. We ended the NAFTA disaster concealed. And think of that. We got out of TPP. Do you know what TPP? That's if you want to have manufacturing in this country, they were going to take it all away. Trans-Pacific Partnership, TPP, we took it away. We withdrew from the horrible Paris Climate Accord. It sounds so nice. I want the Montana Climate Accord, not the Paris Climate Accord. And stood up to China like never before, bringing in tens of billions of dollars. Think of it, though. No other president ever brought up. They never confronted China. And China respected us. We built 571 miles of border wall, and we took it out. You know, we took it out of our military because Congress was impossible. So I said, we're taking it out of our military because it's an invasion of our country. That worked. They sued me all over the place. We won. We ended catch and release. We stopped asylum fraud. We brought illegal immigration to the lowest level ever recorded. That's per your chart. We fully rebuilt the U.S. military and created a thing called Space Force, which is so important. And now we are leading in space. Nobody thought that was possible. And for our great veterans, of which you have a lot, you have a lot in your great state, we passed VA accountability and VA choice, right? They've been trying to get them for 50 years. Accountability is you get rid of the sadists and the bad people that took advantage and harmed our, our heroes, our great people. They beat them up. They were sadists. They were thieves. There were a lot of bad things. We had no right under civil service and other things to fire them. If we caught them stealing hundreds of thousands of dollars, you couldn't do anything about it. I got a law passed in Congress. We got rid of 9,000 bad people and hired people that love our veterans. And then on, and then on choice, so we have some great doctors in the VA, but you couldn't get to them. It would take sometimes months. People would be a little bit ill, and they'd end up becoming terminally ill because you couldn't get to the doctors. If you had to wait more than one day for a doctor, I allowed you to go out, get a local doctor, get yourself taken care of, and we pay for the bill. And Steve Daines helped a lot on that. Actually, Steve, that was a great thing. And we had a 92% approval rating at the VA, the Veterans Administration, 92%. That was the highest rating ever. Now it's down into the 40s, down into the 40s. We obliterated ISIS, and unlike Harris, we stood up and we took care of our friend Israel. We have a problem over there, big problem. We have a lot of people. We have a lot of people that are looking to destroy Israel. Uh, look, the bottom line, we got to get peace over in the Middle East. The Middle East is blowing up because — and largely because our country doesn't know what's happening. They have no idea what's happening. We are going to take care of it. We did the Abraham Accords. It brought peace to the Middle East. We would have had every country signed up right now. If the election weren't rigged, we would have had every single country signed up right now. And I'm proud to be the first president in decades who really, and I talk about it as much as I can, because Hillary Clinton stood on the stage and said, look at him, he's going to start wars. And I said, no, 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 I'm going to stop the wars. You're the one that started the wars. You people, the stupid people started the war.
But I did finish the war on ISIS. And everybody said we could never — we couldn't beat ISIS. Too uh, malleable, too all over the place. Did it in four weeks. We knocked it out. And that's where I learned we have a great military. We don't have a woke military. We have some stupid people on the top that are woke. We have a great military. What they did for me against ISIS was incredible. Four years ago, America's future was blazing bright. And Kamala and Crooked Joe came in and drove our country off the cliff. They've taken our country to levels. We're being laughed at all over the world. All over the world, they're laughing at America. They're laughing at your United States. But with your vote, the rain will be over. That horrible rain of — it's — in a way, it's a rain of terror. You know, it's a weak rain. It's an incompetent rain. But they want to put good people in jail that shouldn't be in jail. It's a very dangerous rain, actually, and people aren't going to take it. It's a very dangerous rain, led by very incompetent people. New era of strength and prosperity and freedom will soon ring true. The moment I take the oath of office, we will seal the border, stop the invasion, and send the illegal aliens back home where they belong. Right? Under the so-called border czar, Harris, illegal aliens are stampeding into America by the millions and millions. They're coming from prisons. They're coming from jails. They're coming from all over the place. We have, they're coming from countries we've never even heard of. Most of the people in this room have never heard. They're coming from some very bad places, evil places. Every day, Kamala is letting migrant criminals roam free to assault, rape, mutilate and kill our citizens. Look at what's happening to our cities. Our cities are being overrun, and they're being taken care of, and our veterans are not being taken Our veterans are forced to sleep on the street, and these people are given hotel rooms in luxury hotels. Right here in Bozeman, an illegal alien brutally stabbed to death a 19-year-old young man. You know all about it. And when the police searched the illegal's car, they found — they found three handguns, two rifles, a shotgun, and a record as long as your arm. On July 4th, a 42-year-old Nashville man died after he tried to stop an illegal alien from stealing tools out of his truck. The, the illegal alien did a number on this man that nobody could even believe. The police officer said one of the most vicious crimes they've ever seen. He was thrown from the hood of the illegal's pickup truck and left to die in the street after being beat to hell. And last month, a Venezuelan illegal alien criminal led in by our so-called border czar. The border czar is a joke. She never went to the border. She never went to the border. Shot a female police officer in Texas multiple times with a rifle and started shooting over and over again. The choice in this election is between a mass amnesty with welfare, social security, and voting rights for the illegal. And they want to give illegal immigrants all of this. And here's all we're going to do. It's going to be called a Trump mass deportation, because we have no choice. We have no choice. We have no choice. If Harris wins, a never-ending stream of illegal alien rapists, MS-13 animals, and child predators will ravage your communities. They're already ravaging your community. Don't forget, they haven't been here that long. They're getting used to it. When they get used to it, they're going to be coming at you at levels that nobody's ever seen before. We have a new form of crime. It's called migrant crime. And it's going to be as vicious as any crime ever seen in this country before. And it's a guarantee. In addition, we have hundreds and hundreds of terrorists in our country that have been allowed in. We didn't allow them in. We had a strong border. We had one year where Border Patrol actually said under Trump in 2019, one year, one of our four years, zero terrorists. Now, I don't really believe that because I don't believe that's possible. But they have it down as a zero. Zero terrorists were able to get into our country. Now we have hundreds and hundreds of of people coming in, thousands of people coming in, and these are the world's worst terrorists. And it's 100 percent certain that really bad things are going to happen. So we don't have a choice. Vote Republican, and we will begin the largest deportation operation in American history. 
And I don't say that with fondness. I don't even know. You know, I don't say that with — I don't even know if that's good politics or bad politics. People would say, oh, Trump is too tough. We don't like him. We don't like him. He's taking murderers out of our country. But we don't like him. He shouldn't be taking murderers out of our country. The truth is, you know, Dwight Eisenhower, he was a sort of a moderate type of guy. General Eisenhower, he was president. Do you know, when he was president, he was the strongest president in history outside of what we did, the strongest in history on the border. He hated when people came into our country illegally. And we want people to come into our country, but they have to come in through a process. They have to come in legally. We want people. <laughs> Harris has let them all in, and we will send them all back. We have to send them back to their countries. You know, their country, when I came in, we had a lot of uh, MS-13 gang members. They're probably the toughest gang in the world, really ruthless people. And I came in, I said, we got to get them out. I told one of the generals, sir, they won't let us have them in. Under President Obama, the countries where they came from, Honduras and Guatemala and all over the place they come, from South America in this case, the countries said, we're not letting them back in. And they would put major aircraft, big airplane, on the runway. So if we were coming in with a plane, you couldn't land, they'd come back. They blocked up the road, so if we bust them in, if we took them in by ship, any way we took them in, they wouldn't let them back. So the general told me that, uh, sir, I'm sorry, we, we can't get them back. They'll never take them back. They don't want them back. MS-13 gang members, who can blame them, right? So I said, how much money do we pay them? He goes, uh, sir, we pay them $750 million a year, sir. I said, uh, all right, inform the countries that they're delinquent. They're not taking their criminals back. They're sending criminals in. You know, they send them in in the caravans. They put some really bad types in the caravans, and they pour in by the thousands that we're not paying them anymore. We're, we're ending it on day one. I signed a document. The next day, I come into the beautiful Oval Office, so beautiful, resolute desk. I sit down. Sir, we have a call from Guatemala. Sir, we have a call from... Mexico, we have a call for, we have all these calls, and they call and they wanted to know, sir, uh, we understand there's a misunderstanding. I said, no, no, why? there's no misunderstanding. You're sending your criminals into our country and you're not taking them back. And I'm not paying you any more, you're not getting any more subsidy from the United States of America. <laughs> and they all said the same thing. The calls came in. Early in the morning, they all said the same thing. Sir, there must be a misunderstanding. There's a misunderstanding, sir. We would love to have MS-13 back in our country. We love them very much, sir. They're wonderful people. And we took tens of thousands. We took thousands and thousands out. You know, believe it or not, there were a lot on Long Island. You read the story where they killed two beautiful 16-year-old girls walking to school and they killed them with a knife. They sliced them up into little pieces. You know why? Because that's much more painful than getting shot. And they wanted to, they, what they did, they're animal, they were animals. And you know who took care of it? ICE. And all of these people like Kamala, they want to abandon ICE, they want to drop ICE. These guys are so incredible. They're brave. You know, I know some of the people in the front row and they're really tough guys and they're brave guys and I know them pretty well. They don't want to work for ICE. ICE would get in, they'd get up to the gangs in Ohio, and a, a lot of them in New York, and amazing, as I said, in Long Island, and they'd walk into a, a gang of 15 of the toughest guys you've ever seen, and you'd see fists and feet and back and forth, and it would go on for three, four minutes, and then the ICE guys would get up and they'd take these guys into a paddy wagon, put them in, and would bring them back to their country. And then she wants to get rid of ICE. These are incredible patriots. They're tough people, and they love our country as much as anybody and maybe more than most. One of the most sinister accomplices in Kamala's plot to demolish American borders has been her ally the partner in the U.S. Senate, one of the biggest phonies in American politics. His name is John Tester. And, and I don't speak badly about somebody's physical disability. But he's got the biggest stomach I have ever seen, I swear. I swear. That's the biggest stomach. I have never seen a stomach like that. Because he doesn't look that heavy. You're not allowed to use the word fat. So if you use the word fat, 
You can say obese, you can say anything, but you can't say fat. That's the end of your political career. I said it the other night, somebody in the audience said, Chris Christie is a fat pig. And I said, sir, Chris Christie is not a fat pig. You should not. And we argued about it for three or four minutes, and so that was it. No, he's not a fat pig. For years, Tester has been telling Montana that he's a moderate while he votes with Biden, Harris, and Bernie Sanders, and Elizabeth Warren, Pocahontas. You remember Pocahontas? <laughs> Pocahontas. I have more Indian blood in me than she has in her, and I have none. I happen to have none. <laughs> but Kamala votes with them 100 percent of the time. Did you know that, Steve? 100 percent of the time. I promise you, Tim will not be voting 100 percent. He may vote with them zero. I would say zero would be close. But in a 50-50 Senate, Tester could have single-handedly stopped the invasion of our country, but he voted against stopping it. Instead, Tester voted for mass amnesty. He voted against the border wall. Totally voted against the wall. Who the hell would vote against the wall? He voted against remain in Mexico. Remember, I had the policy, the greatest policy of all. You couldn't come into our country, you had to remain. They had hundreds of thousands of people that came up from the South. Hundreds of thousands, they couldn't get into our country. He ended it, and these people came in. You think it was easy to get that deal with Mexico? It was very tough. I had to say, I'm going to put a lot of tariffs on either give it to me or not. They were very nice. It was amazing. They wouldn't give it to me. They said, no, sir, we won't do that. I said, all right, I'm going to tariff your cars at 100 percent. Sir, we would love to give you that. We would love a policy of remain in Mexico. We think it's wonderful. You had to see Tijuana. Tijuana was the fastest growing city in the history of the world. They were having hundreds of thousands of people pour into Tijuana, but they couldn't come into our country. Because I said to Mexico, you can stop them. You can stop them at your, at your southern border, down below. And you know those, those caravans, I think I came up with that name, but they are a caravan. They're very horrible, very dangerous for women, very dangerous. Women die all the time. They're being raped. They're dying. The whole thing is a horror show. He voted against Title 42. That's a bad one. He voted against increasing funding for ICE. He voted to provide the deciding vote to shield illegal alien criminals, like the one who murdered Lakin Riley from deportation. He didn't want the person deported. He didn't want any deportation for that person. If you elect John Tester, you are approving the Harris plan to make the 20 million Biden illegals into voting citizens. She said today she wants to give them the right to vote. Many of these people are killers and criminals. They're not going to have the right to vote, and they're not going to destroy our country. She also voted to give them welfare government health care, and let them raid Medicare and Social Security until there is nothing left. They will destroy Social Security. I will save your Social Security with no increase in age or anything else. John Tester cast the decisive vote to approve every single bill that caused record inflation. Remember the Inflation Reduction Act? It was a phony. They used the term inflation reduction. It was actually an inflation increase act. It was a disaster, but they lied because that's what they're good at. They're con people. You know what they are? Misinformation, disinformation. After they got the bill passed, which they shouldn't have had, trillions of dollars, inflation went through the roof. He cast a vote to kill the Keystone XL pipeline. Do you remember that? The Keystone. What the hell are these reporters doing over here? What? Oh, Pulitzer Prize winner. Doug Mills, the great Doug Mills Pulitzer Prize. Even though he works for the New York Times, that's okay. He works for the New York Times, and that's one of the only Pulitzer Prizes that was actually earned. How about Maggot Hagerman. Did you ever hear of it? Maggot Hag Ehrman. She's a reporter. She pretends like she knows more about Trump. I have nothing to do. If the woman speaks to me once in a year, today I called her, I said, 
Your stories are all fake. Why don't you stop it? But think of it. They have a man here who I really like. He's a great — he's a great photographer. Doug, it's nice to have you. Make me look nice and thin, if you don't mind. <laughs> he voted for environmental extremist Tracy Stone Manning to lead the Bureau of Land Management, and he voted the radical left Interior Secretary Deb Haaland — you know who that is, don't you? to wage war on your rights and on your industries, and they really did wage war. But we have a man here, and I'm going to introduce some of your people. We have a man here who knows Tester better than I do, better than anybody does. And Tester and I have nothing to do with each other. And when you watch his commercials, you can forget it. He never votes for me. He voted to impeach me. That guy voted to impeach me, stomach brimming out like a big slob. Uh, do you want to be — I want to impeach. Why? I don't know. What did he do wrong? I did nothing wrong. But I have to tell you, the Republicans stuck with me, and we won very easily. We beat it. But there's a man named Ronnie Jackson. He comes from Texas, and he heard it was a, a race against Tester, and he was treated so unfairly. Could I ask Congressman Admiral Doctor? He's a doctor. He was my White House doctor. He was Obama's White House doctor and Bush's White House doctor. He was also an admiral. So he was an admiral and a doctor. Then he became the doctor in the White House. And you know when I fell in love with him? They said, who's the healthiest? He, he took care of Bush, Obama. Did anybody ever hear of Barack Hussein Obama? Yes. Took care of Obama. And he took care of Trump. And they said, who's the healthiest of those presidents? And he said, without question, it's Donald J. Trump. And I said, I love this guy. <laughs> Ronnie Jackson. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Howdy, Montana, from the great state of Texas. All right. Look, I want to tell you a little bit about this man, John Tester, this man who says that he represents Montana in the Senate, this man who tells you that he's up there trying to clean the place up and trying to fix what's broken. This man is a sleazy, disgusting, swamp politician. He's a fraud and he's a liar. I was in the Navy for 25 years. For 25 years, I was on active duty serving my country. I was an emergency medicine physician, right? I went to Iraq with the United States Marine Corps to a surgical shock trauma platoon on the battlefield between Fallujah and Ramadi. I spent the last 14 years of my career in the Navy on active duty at the White House, serving three presidential administrations and taking care of three presidents, including the best president this country's ever had, Donald J. Trump. I had a spotless, spotless, flawless career in the Navy. I had never had a single complaint about anything. I was a Navy Rear Admiral. And at the end of my time in the military, while I was still on active duty, President Trump had the trust and confidence in me to nominate me as the Secretary of Veterans Affairs, which I was, I was happy to. However, let me tell you, John Tester, at that time, was the ranking member on the Senate Veterans Affairs Committee. He was going to oversee that process. He was also up for re-election. It was 2018. He decided that it was in his political best interest and would help his election if he, could, if he could come out and be the guy that tore down one of Donald Trump's cabinet nominees. He came after me. He tried to destroy me. He tried to destroy my family. He got together with some disgruntled employees that worked for me at the White House who were upset because they didn't get promoted or get something they wanted during their time at the White House. One of them, in fact, is currently Joe Biden's doctor. They, they got together with him and his staff and they made up completely absurd accusations and lies about me to tear down my nomination. They said that I, he, he labeled me on TV as the candy man, right? He said that I was recklessly prescribing narcotics. I can tell you, I can count right here on this hand right here, how many times I prescribed narcotics at the White House in 14 years. He put that out there. He said that I got drunk and wrecked a government vehicle. 
any two-bit investigator can figure out whether or not that happened. He knew it didn't happen. He knew it, and it's been proven that it didn't happen since then. He did not care. He was going to destroy me to better his career, and he passed that information to these morons in the back, right, the mainstream media, who were all too willing to carry this water. And let me tell you, they don't work for you. They work for swamp creatures like John Tester. That's who they work for. Anyways, look, this man tried to destroy me. He tried to destroy my family. I've been waiting for six years to get back here for this night, to be with this man right here, to come after him. The end of John Tester starts tonight. And it starts by bringing this man back to the White House so that he can continue the work that he did draining the swamp when he was a president before. He's the best president we've ever had, and he's the only one that can do the job now. So get him back into office. The next thing we're going to do, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to bring Tim Sheehy to the Senate to replace this swamp hippopotamus, John Tester. So I want to thank you all for coming out and for showing your support and your willingness to help us take this country back. We've got 87 days left. Let's get it done. Great job. Great job. Other than that, he likes him very much. <laughs> but I was a part, uh, look, I was, I maybe blame myself. I said to her, he was a great admiral, highly respected the Navy. He was a great White House doctor. So you have two, you have leadership and you have the doctor. So I figured out what's better for the VA. So I went to Ronnie and I said, Ronnie, what do you think of the possibility of you running the VA? You're a great leader. You're a great admiral, highly respected in the Navy. A war veteran, everything. He had everything you could have. And on top of that, he's a great doctor, a great man, a great personality. Everyone loves him. And, you know, I went to him, I said, what do you think? And he didn't want it. He said, sir, I'd rather not. But he's an incredible patriot. He said, but if you want me to do it, because he was ready to retire and go on to move to Texas and do whatever he was going to do. He said, if you want me to do it, sir, I'll do it. He didn't want to do it. Everybody else would want it. But he really would have preferred not. I said, Ronnie, you know, I did him such a great favor. Ronnie, you'll be great. So I let it out that I'd like to put Ron. I didn't even put it out officially. I let it out to the fake news. I said, I'd like to put Ronnie in as the head of the Veterans Administration. And that's when Tester hit. And it was vicious. It was vicious. It was really. And I didn't even say it. You know, I mean, I, after it happened, I said, Ronnie, it's really unfair. And you know, they sent out people, and we did too, to investigate every charge this slob made. And every charge was totally false. And he has an incredible family, an incredible wife. He has a son. I was making the commencement address at Annapolis. His son was one of the best students at Annapolis, right at the top of the class. And I had a look at the son. And I had to say, what they're doing to your father is really unfair. This is one of the finest men you'll ever see. And that John Tester couldn't have cared less. He just wanted publicity for himself. And it's a disgrace. You have to defeat John Tester. I'm telling you, you have to defeat. You have to do it. And when Ronnie heard what I was doing, he said, oh, you're going to Montana. Does that have anything to do with Tester? I said, actually, it does. We're trying. He said, may I go? He was in Texas. So he had to travel longer than I did. But Ronnie Jackson's one of the finest men, and it was a shame, and really a shame. And you ought to get rid of that guy's bad news. Montana, you've uh, got to do it, and you're going to do it. And I want to bring up, if I could, you heard him just, but just for a second, because I want to shake his hand. He's a spectacular person. He was picked by Steve Daines and a group of people. We were looking for perfection because we didn't want any excuses. The fact that he's handsome should have nothing to do with it, but he is a handsome guy. 
but he's got everything. He's highly successful, great education, Purple Heart recipient, a former Navy SEAL, which, as you know, is a big deal. It's a tough thing to be. A combat veteran at the highest level, a Bronze Star. And, and he's got a — his really is Valor. It's Valor for Heroism Award. You know, the other one talks about Valor. He has a different kind of a Valor. It's the opposite. But Tim Sheehy is going to be an outstanding senator. He was a great businessman, an aerospace company. Uh, he started it in a barn in Montana, right here. Employed a lot of people, turned it into a big success. And I'd like to ask, uh, just to say a few words real quickly, Tim Sheehy, you've got to vote for him. Thank you. Tim, come on. Come on up. Thank you, Mr. President. It's an honor to have you here. You know, listen, I always supported the Trump policies. I never knew the man, but I supported the policies, no question. But I became a true follower of his about four years ago. For those of us who fought in the Middle East, we knew who we were really fighting the whole time. It was Iran. They were murdering us. They've been murdering Americans for 45 years. They were blowing us up with EFPs. They were sending their hit teams across the border and killing us so we could never cross back over and get them. We could never touch them. It was a one-way fight. And in the Obama years, those of you who were there, you know, our hands were tied. I had to watch these guys get killed and sent home in boxes, and we couldn't do anything about it. And that was so frustrating. It made me sick. And a few years ago, when we were fighting ISIS, Trump told the Iranians, don't touch any Americans. We're here to fight ISIS. You touch one hair on any American's head, we're going to kill you. And they didn't believe him. And they didn't believe him. And then they launched some rockets at some Americans up at Balad. And we lost a couple. And Trump didn't hesitate. The next day, he dropped a bomb on that son of a bitch, Qasim Soleimani, and blew him to pieces. He blew him to pieces. And I told the president in person the first time we met, I said, listen, you may endorse me or not, you may support me or not, but I'll tell you one thing, you will always have my loyalty because you're the guy that dropped a bomb on that son of a bitch, Soleimani, and you'll always have your back for that. But listen, Biden, Harris, Waltz, whatever you want to call them, they are selling you out every single day. They are selling out hardworking Americans. They are taking your money out of your pocket and giving it to illegal immigrants. They're taking money out of your pocket and sending billions of dollars of it overseas to other countries while you're going broke. Our gas prices have doubled and tripled. Inflation's through the roof. Your life is worse off because the policies of this administration that John Tester has voted for every single time are killing America. So this fall, we got to send Donald Trump back to the White House and John Tester back to Big Sandy. Great job. Thank you, Tim. Thank you very much, Tim. And, and I have to say, Tim stands for very strong borders, all the things that we want. He wants strong borders, a very strong military, low taxes, low inflation. But more importantly than anything else, he wants to make America great again. He's going to do it. We're going to do it together. Also with us tonight, and I said it before, he's a special man, Senator Steve Daines. You're lucky to have him. He's, a one, he's a, an unbelievable, respected by everybody. And uh, it's an honor to have him as a friend. And he, he wanted to do this race. He said, we have to do this race. We have to take control of the Senate and the House. We're going to do the House. We're going to do the Senate. And this is, this is the answer right here. This is the one seat. We do this seat, we're going to win the Senate. So, so important. And Tim, you're going to be great. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. Steve, you're a fantastic man. Kids, you have a great father. Take good care of your father, okay? I mean that. And I alluded to it before. He's a fantastic guy, a friend of mine. I was one of the earliest to endorse him. Greg Gianforte, your governor. He's been respected by everybody. Greg, please. Please, thank you. A representative who has been absolutely a fantastic guy. He's a tough cookie. He's a great fighter. He has every military record you can have. 
Ryan Zinke. He's running for Congress again. Good luck, Ryan. You're going to do great. Thank you. I saw some good poll numbers on you today. That's very nice. And Ronnie Jackson, thank you for that speech you made. That was beautiful. And nobody could have done it like — nobody could do it like you. He knows this guy better than anybody, unfortunately. It was my fault, Ronnie. I shouldn't have done it. I should have said, Ronnie, enjoy your life. I had to say, come on, Ronnie. And then I tell these horrible people back there, it's going to be Ronnie. Oh, boy. But, uh, but you know what he did? He came back and he said, I'm going to run for Congress. And he ran, and he won. And he won big, big. All right? That's pretty good. Think of it. You're a great doctor, become the White House doctor. You're a great admiral, you're doing great. Then you decide, hey, I'm going to run for Congress. So you have Congress, you have doctor, you have admiral. Who the hell has a career like that? That's pretty good. That beats all of us. Tim, that beats all of us, I think. Former acting attorney general and a friend of mine, Matt Whitaker. Thank you, Matt. Thank you very much. Great job. Your auditor. Oh, that's good, because you have a lot of money here. Troy Downing. Thank you very much, Troy. Great job. Secretary of State Christy Jacobson. Christy, thank you. Good job. You have my endorsement. She's got my endorsement. They both do. I'm giving you my endorsement now. This way, I don't have to go home and write it out. Is that okay? She has my endorsement, complete and total endorsement. Your great Attorney General, Austin Knudsen. Thank you, Austin. Great, beautiful family. Great family. State Party Chair, Don Kalschmidt. Where's Don? Don, thank you very much. Good job you're doing. They're all doing well, right? They're doing well, Don. You're doing a great job. RNC Chairman Michael Watley, very powerful man. Michael, thank you. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Michael. What well, he's got one function. We don't need the votes. He's going to stop the steal. He's going to stop the steal. He's going to make sure that those votes are properly counted. You ever hear things like this? You vote two, uh, two months early and you need more time. We want to go back to one-day voting and paper ballots. Very simple. Very simple. But he did a great job. He was the head of the Republican Party in North Carolina when those other states were being robbed and rigged. That guy stayed, held so true, and he's going to do it with — he had — actually had 603 lawyers working, and other guys just said, oh, to, you can never take it for granted with these people, because they do something very, very well. You know what that is? They cheat. That's what they is. And in the audience is a man that I gave a pardon to, and I'm very proud. Would you stand up, please? Stand up. With you with a beautiful hat on, right there. Yeah. Stand up. I was very honored. Handsome guy, too. And people were very happy with that. You were happier than anybody, but it was my honor to do it. Thank you very much. And one of our greatest golfers in the history of — I'm a golfer. I love golf. This guy is a major golfer. He's a major friend of mine, one of the best ever. Uh, they knighted him in, in England or in UK, and he just knew how to win. He could take people, and he'd play the best players in the world, and they always folded in front of him. In fact, I think I'm going to bring him into government because we like to get other people to fold. And his nickname is Faldo, but he's really — because he makes everyone — but his name is Faldo. Nick Faldo and his beautiful wife, Lindsay. Where is Nick? Where is Nick? That guy can play golf. He's won six majors and many, many tournaments, and he's one of the greatest ever. So thank you very much. It's an honor as a golfer. I don't know how many — does anybody play golf? Did anybody ever hear of Nick Faldo? Yeah, they heard. Thank you very much, Nick. It's an honor. You are a piece of work, I'll tell you. He's a tough cookie, too. You talk about a tough cookie, that's a tough cookie. From the moment we take back the White House from Kamala and Crooked Joe, I believe we're going to have the four greatest years in the history of our country. Starting on day one, we will end inflation and make America affordable again. To bring down the prices of all goods, we will stop the Biden-Harris war on American energy, and we will drill, baby, drill. We're going to bring them way down. That's what caused the inflation. 
Their stupid energy policies caused the inflation. I will terminate the Green News scam, deliver historic regulation cuts, and I will end the Biden-Harris electric vehicle mandate on day one. If you want to have a gasoline-propelled car, or if you want a hybrid, or if you want an electric car, it's great. But you're going to have your choice. Whatever you want, you're going to have your choice. That's the way it should be. We will pass massive tax cuts for workers, and that includes no tax on tips, as I said. We're going to stop outsourcing, demand a level playing field for the American worker, and turn the United States into the manufacturing superpower of the world. We had it going so beautifully, and then these stupid people came along and ended it. We're going to be the manufacturing superpower of the world, and we can do it so easy. We're going to rebuild our cities into beacons of hope and safety and beauty, better than they have ever been before. And we will end the migrant crime epidemic, demolish the foreign drug cartels. We are going to demolish those cartels. We're going to crush gang violence, support our police, and lock up violent offenders behind bars. And we are going to straighten out the crime in our cities. We are going to straighten out the crime in our country. We're going to get it done fast. We will deport pro-Hamas radicals and make our college campuses safe and patriotic again. You see what's happening. And before I even arrive at the Oval Office, I will have the horrible war between Russia and Ukraine settled. I will restore peace through strength. That's what I did. We had no wars. Think of it. No wars. No wars during the Trump administration, Steve. In my next term, we will build a great Iron Dome missile defense shield over our country, a dome like has never been seen before, and it will be entirely made in the USA, including Montana. And unlike Biden, who's destroying Social Security and so many other things, I will not cut one cent from Social Security. I will not raise the age, which they want to do. They're destroying Social Security and Medicare by allowing all of these people to come in on the plan. You earned it. You deserve it. We're going to preserve it for you just the way it is. Thank you. And as you know, I kept my promise for four years. And I will keep my promise very easily again. And seniors, as I said, will not pay taxes on their Social Security. That's a big deal. On day one, I will sign a new executive order to cut federal funding for any school pushing critical race theory, transgender insanity, and other inappropriate racial, sexual, or political content onto the, so onto the lives of our children. We're not going to do it. I will not give one penny to any school that has a vaccine mandate or a mask mandate. Right? Right? And I will keep men out of women's sports, if that's okay. See, Nick, at least in golf, you know, they got a putt, right? Maybe in golf they have a little chance, but not much. No, I don't see it. I don't see I know you too well. I don't see them playing against you. But the women golfers are doing very well. But what do you think, Nick? You keep men out of women's sports? You think that's okay? I think so, huh? I think so. I will fully uphold the Second Amendment. We will protect innocent life. And we will restore free speech in our country. And I will secure our elections. Our goal will be one-day voting with paper ballots, proof of citizenship, and a thing called voter ID. They don't want voter ID. Why don't they want voter ID? You know, we start off with voter ID, and they say, we don't want. You know why? Because they want to cheat. There's only one reason you don't want identification. You want to cheat. The radical left Democrats rigged the presidential election in 2020. We will not let them rig the presidential election in 2024. Not going to let them rig it. 
And we want to do this as a landslide. We're doing great in the polls, and so is Tim. We want to do this as a landslide. And the one way you win, guaranteed, no matter what they do, it's called we want to win too big to rig. Too big to rig. Too big to rig. Gets too big, and they just say, oh, we can't do it. We can't do it. They got us. Too many votes. We have a lot of votes. So get your friends, get your family, and get out and vote in numbers. And America, I tell you what, like numbers that you've never seen before. I think that's going to happen. I think we're going to have the greatest election victory in the history of our country.